Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Christine. Today I'm going to be showing a full house tour so that you can see what our home looks like eight months after completely decluttering and reorganizing everything we own following the KonMari method. husband Tim and I live in Scotland in this beautiful Victorian house with our two Alaskan Malamutes Lilo and Rumo and our cat Milo. Rumo loves this entryway because it's so cold. It's simply furnished with just a mirror and a shelf with some hooks underneath and a shoe cabinet. Our entryway opens up onto the hallway which forms the centre of our home. I love the bright and airy feel of this space. Our living room is south facing, so it's bathed in the most wonderful natural light all day long. It's very simply furnished with just two large sofas, a built-in bookcase and cupboard, and of course the TV. In front of the fireplace we have a small rug which our dogs always lie on to eat their snacks, even though they eat all their meals in the kitchen. As it's winter at the moment, we have some extra cushions and throws on the sofas, which we all enjoy. The recessed bookcase holds a collection of some of Tim's favourite first edition hardback books, featuring authors such as Jasper Ford, Robert Rankin and Terry Pratchett. During the decluttering of our home, we purged over 300 books. The cupboard below houses a vastly reduced number of DVDs, video games and Tim's PlayStation when it's not in use. Between the cupboard and leather sofa is a wicker basket of extra throws and blankets. On the other side of the hallway, across from the living room, is our dining room. Again, this room is quite sparsely furnished, with a dining table and chairs and an antique sideboard. There's also a recessed bookcase by the window, and the most recent addition, a Globe drinks bar. We picked up this mahogany dining table and chair set for just £20, and we re-upholstered the seats ourselves. We even put together a video showing how we did it, so if you're interested, I'll put the link below. This Globe Drinks Bar was a gift from me to Tim this past Christmas. We love how it looks and the fact it's a clever way to store bottles and glasses. The Recess Bookcase holds some more of Tim's books. We bought this antique sideboard just before Christmas. It holds our new formal table service, which is a classic Royal Dalton China in the Cambridge pattern. Our dining room doubles as our board games room. Board games are Tim's passion. To stop his collection getting completely out of control, it's strictly limited to this wall unit only, which we purchased in IKEA. It holds in excess of 300 games. Tim very recently decluttered his games again using the KonMari method, so if you're interested in watching that, I'll link that video below. Decluttering each category in turn made it really simple to group similar things together, and as you'll see throughout our home, everything has a designated spot. This makes it so quick and easy to keep everything clean and organised. The cupboard under the stairs used to hold a mixture of shoes, coats and cleaning supplies. Now it's entirely dedicated to cleaning supplies. Where possible, larger items are stored on a rack to keep them off the floor. And everything else is organised in these two cabinets. I'll link below the video showing the makeover of this space. 
With such heavy shedding pets in the house, cleaning is a big part of my daily life. Now that the excess products have been discarded and the products I prefer to use are stored in a central area, I can always find what I need within a matter of seconds. Our downstairs shower room is a lovely space with big windows which let in lots of light. I recently replaced all the pictures on the wall with prints of photographs I've taken over the years, all with a water theme. On this wall, you can see a couple of my favourite photos of Leela and Rumo playing in their paddling pool. You can follow them on Instagram at Double Trouble Mouths. Inside this small cabinet, we keep only the products we use daily or often. Spare toiletries are kept elsewhere in a designated area. This keeps our cabinet tidy and clutter free. Below the wall mounted cabinet is a large heated towel rail, a must in Scotland. Over in this corner is the loo, above which I framed one of the very first underwater photos I ever took with a GoPro camera. On the windowsill we always keep spare loo roll and a kilner jar of homemade toilet bombs, which are a fun yet extremely effective way to clean your toilet bowl without harsh chemicals. I'll link below my toilet bomb recipe. On the other side of the shower room is our vanity style mirror and sink. We keep the shelf below the mirror completely clear. Below the largest window is a small storage bin in which we keep all of the towels for this room. Decluttering was the perfect excuse to replace all of our dingy old towels with new ones which spark joy. Next to the sink is one of my favourite photos. It's a perfectly timed shot of one of my brothers spearing my unsuspecting and fully dressed sister back into the pool. Inside the shower cubicle itself, Tim and I each have a shelf of just the products we are currently using. As I mentioned earlier, all spares are kept elsewhere until required. You can, however, often find Rumo having a cheeky snooze inside the shower. The kitchen forms the north wing of our house, together with the mudroom, garage and study. It's a large room filled with light due to lots and lots of windows. As you can see, even our fridge is kept clean and clutter free. Beside the fridge is this bank of cabinets surrounding our 20 year old oven. We keep our most frequently used herbs and spices in these magnetic containers on the side of the fridge. We also keep out a knife block, chopping block, egg timer and cooking utensils next to the oven, plus a stand mixer and a toaster. Frequently used oils etc are kept close to the oven for ease of access. All of our Tupperware and jars are grouped together in this larger cabinet, plus a set of mixing bowls which double as serving bowls. This is also where we keep our daily placements and coasters as this is where they fit the best. In the lower cabinets we keep all of our bakeware, chopping boards, pots and pans, plus some large appliances such as our slow cooker and food processor. It's super easy to find and access everything. Above the sink is a very deep windowsill in which I keep fresh herbs and a bin for food scraps to be recycled. This is a watercolour painting I did of Leela on day 2 of my 2015 New Year's resolution to do a new thing a day. Tim really liked it and framed it. Underneath the sink we have two cupboards. The right hand one holds all of our kitchen cleaning supplies, dish towels, first aid kit and medications. The left hand cupboard contains our oven gloves plus some items which don't really fit elsewhere. Dog bowls, wire cooling racks and some oak serving platters. We always keep our counters clear. Next to the sink is our dishwasher and what we call the dishwasher zone. Cutlery and crockery which goes in and out of the dishwasher on a daily basis is organised as close to it as possible. Tim made me these fabulous bespoke drawer dividers using foam board and samples of vinyl wallpaper which we already had from previous projects. 
Marie Kondo recommends removing labels to reduce visual clutter, which is a practice we had already adopted to a certain extent, as you can see in our baking and pantry cupboards. The upper cabinets hold our plates and bowls, plus at the very top some less frequently used items such as an ice cream maker and mugs. At the very end is our glassware cabinet. In this corner we keep our microwave and fruit bowl, our kitchen bin, my cast iron saucepans, because this is the only place the stand fits, and a drinking fountain. We keep our surfaces very clear, but I do love to keep freshly cut flowers in the windows. At this end of the kitchen is our fireplace, above which sits a large mirror. On the mantelpiece we keep dog treats, a candle and some stationery for easy access. When the fire's roaring, the dogs often leave the room, but they never go too far. So here's an overview of our kitchen, as it typically looks on a daily basis. The doorway on the right hand side of the fireplace takes us into my study. This is where I work from home every day. The first thing you see when you enter the room is this huge wall-to-wall -wall built in bookcase with cupboards and drawers. Apart from a handful of cookbooks, all of these books belong to Tim. Decluttering books was one of the hardest categories for Tim, but as I mentioned previously, we managed to identify over 300 books which no longer spark joy and which we donated. This is my desk, which I absolutely love. The laptop is mine and the desktop is Tim's. I recently reorganized some desk drawers, making bespoke drawer dividers using the same technique as Tim used for our kitchen drawers. The third category, papers, was in my opinion one of the hardest categories. We had random piles of papers all over the place, dating back to over 20 years in some cases. It took a long while to read them, sort them and then shred, recycle or file them. But the end result was absolutely worth the effort. Now we keep only the most up to date and necessary papers and are ruthless about sorting papers as soon as we get them. We discarded over 10 black sacks full of papers. On the windowsill, I keep a photo of Legend, the guide dog puppy we sponsor. A photo of an Alaskan Malamute team I completed an expedition with through the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in northern Alaska, and an old photo of Tim which I took on holiday in Devon. This is my cupboard of camera equipment. In the drawers we keep a selection of photo frames, diaries, calendars, packaging materials, maps, DVDs for the computers, and of course some games. In this cupboard we keep a selection of printer paper, including lots of photo paper. And finally, this cupboard holds a selection of box files, which make up the remainder of our filing system, plus of course a shredder. At the far end of the kitchen is our mudroom, which is one of Leela's favourite spots to nap. This is the entryway into our home that everyone uses. This is where everyone takes off their coats, boots and shoes before entering our home. The mudroom appears deceptively empty, with just one piece of furniture in it, this hutch which I designed and built myself. However, it actually holds a great deal as I designed it with a hidden storage area in the back to hold the majority of our dog equipment. Leads, collars, harnesses, stakes and lines and everything busy arctic dogs require. And that concludes the ground floor of our house. We love our staircase with its striking cast iron railings, which are apparently the same as the ones at nearby Cliche Castle, or so we've been told. Upstairs we have four bedrooms which come off a central landing. I love how much light there is due to this tall stained glass window and the overall feeling of space and openness.
Our guest bedroom is a simple pretty room with lots of natural light. It's furnished with a bed and a corner wardrobe unit. As with the towels, the majority of our old bedding did not make us happy so we have slowly but surely been replacing it all. This window sits high up due to the roof of the kitchen which adjoins this external wall. We used to have more cacti but our cat Milo keeps knocking them onto the floor. The bed is a storage bed which is fantastically useful. It holds all of the bedding for the entire house plus some smaller travel accessories and bags which we use frequently as well as a few old towels which Tim insisted we keep just in case. As you can see, we made our own drawer dividers using a similar method to the drawers in the kitchen and the study. Below this window is a built-in cupboard, which is currently empty. It used to be stuffed. This piece of furniture is deceptively spacious, but we keep it mostly empty so our guests can unpack and feel at home during their stay with us. This is where we keep extra pillows, guest towels, an extra blanket, plus an iron and ironing board. Again, all the drawers are kept empty, apart from the bottom one which contains a number of our dog's rosettes. I just haven't decided where to put them yet. We used to have a further large bookcase next to these shelves, absolutely crammed with books and magazines, but thanks to decluttering, we were able to empty and remove it. As a result of following the KonMari method, this room has gone from being a cluttered catch-all of random piles of papers, drawers full of electronics, toiletries, jewelry and makeup, and boxes of photographs, to the calm and peaceful guest room it was always intended to be. Our bedroom is one of my favourite rooms in the house. It's south facing and the large bay window bathes the room with sunlight. The first thing I do each morning is make the bed. It doesn't always stay tidy for long though as all our animals love to snooze here. Our room is decorated with paintings we commissioned of our cats. Sadly our boys have both passed away and Milo is now our only cat. On top of our chest of drawers, I like to have fresh flowers and a photo from our wedding. Marie Kondo suggests storing and folding clothes in a specific way, which we follow for the most part. All of Tim's t-shirts and long sleeve tops are folded vertically, which makes it easy to see each one. The bottom drawer holds all of our spare or less often used toiletries. At the side of our wardrobe is our laundry basket and a tiny suitcase. In this case, I've corralled all of my hair products. This keeps everything together and I just pull it out whenever I want to use anything. This wardrobe used to hold only Tim's clothes, with my clothes in a wardrobe in a different room. But now following decluttering, between the chest of drawers and this wardrobe, all of our clothes are organised with room to spare. I hugely downsized my makeup collection to just this train case, a basket and a bag of brushes. Out-of-season clothes are stored in the bins at the top. My clothes are hung with longer, thicker items on the left, gradually rising to the right, which Marie Kondo claims to be psychologically uplifting. My drawers are organised with underwear, socks and tights together, and active wear below. Tim's shirts and workwear are kept together, with his undies and socks organised into separate drawers. I love how tidy and clutter free our room is. Like the rest of the house, it's so easy to keep everything clean and organized. I love our upstairs bathroom, but what may surprise you about this room is it has no storage at all because we just don't need any.
Tim prefers the shower room, whilst I prefer the bathroom. I have all the space I need to store the products I use on the side of the bath itself, plus a spare bar of soap on the windowsill. Hidden from sight is a small basket at the side of the loo which contains all the products I use to clean the upstairs floor of the house. Like the shower room downstairs, this bathroom has a large heated towel rail and again we replaced all the old towels with new ones. This bedroom has been transformed into my crafts room. Tim's passion is playing board games and mine is arts and crafts. When we applied the KonMari method to this subcategory, I decluttered shockingly little, as anything and everything could be useful in a project one day. It did, however, afford me the opportunity to reacquaint myself with what I had and it was a fantastic reason to reorganize everything from scratch. I actually managed to empty and remove an entire bookcase of the same size as the three you see in place. The drawers hold all manner of items, organised so like items are grouped together. Glitter is with glitter, wallpaper samples are together, cleaning supplies are together and so on. I like to make handmade cards such as these based on watercolour paintings I sometimes do of dogs on Instagram, with their owner's permission of course. These cards are sold in a local cards and flower shop. Once again, here's an example of those foam board drawer dividers we love so much. This works great for keeping my gemstone beads and MAC pigments organised. On the mantelpiece I have these framed photos of our cats from many years ago. And this room also contains many small mementos of our extensive travels over the years. These bookcases hold the bulk of my collection, with everything from professional drawing tools to soap moulds and everything in between. Similar items are all grouped together, and as you'll see, a lot of my art supplies are organised in clear Tupperware containers so I can find what I need at a glance. All of my books line the lower shelves of the bookcases. The one thing you may have noticed that is missing from this room is a desk or work surface. I'm currently working on converting our old piano, which used to be in our dining room, into a desk. I'll post a video about this project once it's completed. On top of this bookcase is a pin board full of ticket stubs and flyers from lots of events and gigs. I had so many, but I limited myself to this board only and discarded the rest. It's hard to declutter when almost everything sparks joy. But having purged some items and thoroughly reorganised this room, I now love this space. Whereas before, I felt overwhelmed by visual clutter. I can't wait to get my piano desk finished so I can really get stuck into some new projects. The final stop on our tour is Milo's room. Yes, that's right, our little Miss Milo has her own bedroom. The first thing you see when you enter this room is this beautiful wardrobe which houses outerwear and accessories. This is Milo's bed and the only other piece of furniture in here is a blanket box at the foot of the bed. On the mantelpiece we've placed some candles and framed photos of Milo, her brother Shadow and Loki who have both passed away. Below is her very own drinking fountain.
I found this blanket box in one of our attics when we bought this house. Inside are all of Milo's bowls, food, treats, grooming supplies and spare collars and tags. We recently purchased this bedding especially for this room. I love the colours and textures. As you can see, Milo loves this reindeer hide which we brought back with us from our wedding in Finnish Lapland. Down the side of the bed is Milo's litter box and a pedal bin. Under the bed is where I keep a basket full of all the cleaning supplies for this room. This tiny dustpan and brush is perfect for sweeping up cat litter. And this is Milo's heated bed for when it's really cold. On the floor is a rug from Damascus, Syria, which I've had since I was at school. This is one of my favourite bags, but it hangs here really just because it doesn't fit anywhere else. Inside the wardrobe are all of our coats and jackets, again rising from left to right, going from longer heavier items to lighter shorter ones. Below are all of my boots. In the top drawers are some bags, scarves, hats and gloves. In the lower drawers are my party shoes and on the right are my everyday bags. Milo loves her room. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck to the end, then well done. I really appreciate it. And if you did like the video, please do give it a like. And if you'd like to see more from us in the future, please subscribe. Thanks so much.